Welcome. We're really excited to speak with you today about the Digital Library of the Caribbean. Uh, we are Lori Taylor. I'm the Senior Director for Library Technology and Digital Strategies. Um, we're also uh, on this presentation with Brian Keith, the Associate Dean for Administration and Faculty Affairs, uh, Perry Collins, the Copyright and OER Librarian, and Todd Digby, and I am the Chair of Library Technology Services. And in this presentation, we'll explain where DLAC began, how it's matured, recent changes, and what DLAC will be with new community and capacity building work over the next four years. So in talking about DLAC, we're talking about it at age 18 and the future to come. So first, what is DLAC? From its founding, the Digital Library of the Caribbean, or DLAC, has developed to provide access to collections as well as collaborative network to, a collaborative network to support partners, scholars, educators, and broader publics. DLAC was established in the Association of Caribbean University Research and Institutional Libraries Conference um, a, a, and then a planning meeting in San Juan, Puerto Rico in 2004. Judith Rogers, director of the libraries at the University of the Virgin Islands, convened initial discussions and led development alongside the University of Florida, Florida International University, and six other founding partners. DLAC is a collection of collections with over 4 million pages of newspapers, maps, photographs, correspondence, scholarship, and teaching resources, all freely available from DLAC.com. DLAC is a community-driven effort with content shared by nearly 80 partners. DLAC's collections depend on many individual and institutional efforts to process, digitize, and describe materials. DLAC shares the Hartner collections through post-custodial digitization. As a digital library, DLAC can share collections without removing them from their home institutions. DLAC also brings people together through online workshops, professional development institutes, and outreach events. DLAC extends beyond collections to strengthen our community. 18 is the age of majority when we officially reach adulthood in the US. It's a huge milestone for humans, and as it turns out, for systems and communities like DLAC. So to frame our talk today, we're going to follow John Cotter's eight-step change model, which flows in three phases. We're going to use this just for recent history with DLAC and then on through the next few years for expectations. As a quick review, Cotter's model includes the stages and steps of warm up with establishing a sense of urgency, creating the guiding coalition, developing a vision and strategy, communicating the change vision, and also introducing the new practice with empowering broad based action and generating short term wins. And the final grounding phase, consolidating gains and producing more change, anchoring new approaches in the culture. We're using Cotter's model with the recognition that change is constant. We are viewing a slice of time with DLAC and following certain changes while recognizing that these phases and steps are overlapping and flow in return. For example, in one area, we might be in the step for empowering broad-based action while also simultaneously consolidating gains and producing more change. This is a bit different, we think, um, than most common uses of Cotter's model. We see these stages as useful explaining the cycle and the flow of change for this particular time segment. For our warm up, we've been in the sense of urgency for many years. DLAC began as a project and transitioned to a program in 2011. Since the early project days, the goal was always to get to the next stage of maturity, maintainability, and sustainability for ongoing growth that meets partner needs and facilitates the community in growing together. While we had worked consistently towards these goals for a decade, by 2021, we faced impacts from deferred maintenance on technologies, limited staffing, and impacts from staffing vacancies and so many changes with the pandemic. DLAC has always been about more than technology. It's always been based on a technological foundation with partners working together for preservation and access to materials. Then along with work on materials, the community was together for pursuing new needs. In working with partners for so many years, the vision was clear and always had two parts continue the core for access and preservation, always with strong shared governance, collaborate across the community to build additional capacity for more work with access and preservation, and for new work with copyright, ethical rights, technical training, OER, digital scholarship, data management, and more. In December 2020, the foundation needed urgent attention. The DLUX site was down for one week because of aging technology and deferred maintenance. It could not remain in that state. At that point, the team also only had one, the technical team only had one programmer who had been with the team for over a year, and he passed away. In January 2021, the two new programmers who had only been with us for a few months, uh, all of us together recognized that we had to rebuild the entire technical apparatus, and we needed to begin with the patron interface. 
The sense of urgency was known with the outage affecting all partners. We also recognize that this is a foundation that's deeply connected to the community. We immediately engaged more with partners for the technical needs to be able to release a new Python interface by November and to update other core aspects. For example, we communicated with the community to move forward on an update to the bylaws, elicit nominees for overdue elections for the executive board, and plan DLOC's first ever all virtual partner meeting. During this time, the then DLOC director position posted at FIU became vacant. In 2021, we learned of more technical problem, problems and of communication drops across the community. This was all in addition to the lack of a partner meeting and a lack of stable communications with the pandemic. As we learned of problems, we sought to correct them. Technologically, in the fall of 2021, we released the new site and created a plan for production. Recognizing that technology is only part of the foundation, we supported the election process with new executive board members now elected, supported voting on new bylaws, and released a new govern governance site. Part of the prior difficulty was that the patron site and governance and production were all together. Now we have three sites, which is a major win for patrons and partners in terms of ease of access to the appropriate information. The new governance site has a list of all partners. This is minor, it is a list. It is also a huge win. This is the first time we have had a list online of all of the partners. The prior bundled site that served patron production and governance only listed partners who had collections that were active. Now all partners are listed, even those in process for sharing materials. We hosted the first ever virtual partnership partner meeting. This was a huge win with new partners meeting others for the first time. We also developed our first org chart. This was a combination of communication and a small win for the formalization of DLOG for documenting and communicating community operations. This falls within waves of overlapping change within change management. We started working on this chart while working on the grant proposal, which we were just awarded. In working on the grant proposal, we did the normal method for explaining to partners and drew this out. Rather than just rough scribbles, we took the time to enlist an amazing designer, Tracy, Tracy McKay Rat, Ratliff, for her, for her to create uh, this into the design you see now. This is not your average org chart. The center is heart of partners. Partners rely on the foundation from the host institutions for operations and outreach and enlist other communities like the scholarly advisory board and executive board for ongoing activity. While the grant application was the impetus to create the org chart, we needed this because we needed to re-explain to existing partners and to better explain to new partners for how DLOC expected to work and to have the complicated model be made clear. We are now consistently using the org chart to share the model with partners. Sharing another win, the patron site. This new site is the first ever mobile responsive site for DLOC. It remains in the three official languages for DLOC and presents all materials from DLOC with no interruptions in, from production. Uh, uh, so please check out the new site at DLOC.com. Again, the governance site, this is empowering and a win. For the first time, partners have uh, the full list of partners as well as core governance and technical resources all in one place instead of scattered throughout the old bundled site. And it is currently almost all in English, so we, are, we will be adding translations soon. Now for this season of change following Cotter's model, we move to the final group grounding phase with step seven and eight. Seven, consolidating gains and producing more change, and eight, anchoring new approaches in the culture. And you can see here some of the dates that listed as we move forward. And again, we recognize that these are not static ends, but are steps in an ongoing dance. Steps seven and eight also overlap with empowering broad-based change for sustained evolution. And indeed, this final stage is also the beginning. Again, working once more for a stronger foundation. So this time, as we I, I undertake the next cycle of change, that you know, co-located and concentric um, with the uh, with the other st stages of change, establishing the sense of urgency means an urgency uh, to share joy. Here you can see a selection from the Archipelago's journal special issue on DLOC. 
Archipelagos is the top journal of Caribbean digital studies. This special issue shares love and joy with DLAC with articles by scholars who have used and supported DLAC over many years. The special issue came out right around the time of the news of the new grant award. So thus our urgency was in sharing the joy from the past for an even brighter future. So in sharing no, news of our newest joy today, um, thanks to the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation's generous gift, DLAC is now embarking on the revitalizing DLAC project. The project will cover four interrelated activities, refining a sustainable, a menu of sustainable technical assistance services, working with four Caribbean-based partners, faculty and staff members each year during intensive engagements. Um, will, the project team will learn and consult about needs relevant to their collections. And each intensive planning engagement will serve as a deep dive into a collaborative exchange, resulting in the development of a five-year plan that aligns available network assets with partner needs. And so we're doing these as a really grounded theory approach in order to develop a foundation with 16 partners across the four years of the grant, but also to then share those out with the full DLAC community. We're establishing a rights advisory network, which will be made up of an inter international rotating group of experts to balance day-to-day -day as uh, practical as well as more significant demands on DLAC partners and users through direct responses to questions. Sustained co conversations, for instance, may deal with complex topics such as colonialism and intellectual property, privacy, and community-driven approaches to open licensing. Right now, DLAC has such a strong foundation for technical training for doing digitization and metadata and a strong foundation for digital preservation. But we found over the years that there's a really critical need for thinking about rights, you know, rather than, okay, digitization stops it this year or digitization is enough. No, let's talk about ethical rights, um, different uses to other considerations. We're also enriching the educational resources for higher ed. This component will develop a pipeline to compensate instructors for documenting and sharing teaching resources, including assignments and lesson plans, contextualized primary source sets and data sets and course modules, as well as for co full courses with materials shared through DLOC and other appropriate systems. So this helps us to answer, and what do you do with it? How does the digitization of these primary materials really take flight and continue on with new lives and new ways of impact? We're also documenting and guiding for future engagement. We're going to publish a series of eight to 10 short handbooks, two to three per year, in multiple languages that will share knowledge about professional development topics of known interest, exhibits supporting student interns, preservation and disaster response, collection development, digital journal publishing, with additional to topics uh, determined from consultations with partners. So in some ways, we've described this as the and, 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 you know, when partners call and say, hey, we're interested in digitizing or we have a new collection, these are all the other things that they ask about, you know, oh, and we'd love, really love to do a digital exhibit and we have this journal. And so how do we formalize those supports rather than simply being reactive or responsive, you know, to the partners that know to call um, and have the opportunity to ask questions. So with the new project underway, we're now at the hiring stage. We're excited um, for the new phases and for waves of change. With Cotter's phases essentially, you know, stage one, uh, vision and coalition building, two, empowering broad-based action and achieving wins, and three, consolidating future orientation to success. Of these, the second and third PDLAC processes will result in concentric waves of broad-based action and change while supporting a stronger growing community. We'll do this through the rights network, OER, the partner resources for many unknown and to be defined needs and with new resources for the future. Until two years ago, we were working to rebuild a foundation. For this next phase, our hearts are filled with joy and gratitude. And it's very abundant because this urgency is for growing from a positive place for more joy. So with that, we're very excited to um, have shared a bit about DLAC, where it's been, where we're going with you. Um, we look forward to engaging with all DLAC partners and new partners in the coming years. Please contact us if you're interested in becoming a content contributing partner, or if you're interested in collaborating with DLAC in other ways. Thank you.